In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you how to create a cool 3D button with interactions. So in this example website, zestyagency.com.au, we can see that all the buttons throughout the website, for example, this visit membership button, has this nice 3D effect. When the user clicks onto the button, it then presses in. So let's go ahead and mimic this in Webflow. And the first step you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and add a link block and we want to give this a class of CTA-button. And once that's done, we can go ahead and add another div block inside this link block. So you can see right now we have this div block added inside that link block that we just created. We want to give it a class of button-wrapper. And we want to set this from static to relative, simply because we're going to be using absolute positioning later on. So inside this button wrapper, let's go ahead and give it another div block. So this is a div block inside a div block inside a div block. And we want to give this a class of button top. This is the top layer that we'll be building. Let's go ahead and style this button as we normally do. So perhaps I'll give it some padding at the top and bottom of 18 pixels or 16 pixels, and maybe give it a padding left and right of 32 pixels. Let's go ahead and add a background color. Uh, let's just say this nice blue right here. And let's go ahead and add a text in it. So grab a text and we'll go ahead and rename the text to something like click me now with exclamation mark. And what we can do, selecting the CTA button, so the main parent div, we can go ahead and just remove the text decoration of underline. So it just doesn't have the underlying effect. And Clicking into button top, that layer, we can go ahead and just change the color of the text to be white or, or whatever you like it to be. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to bold as well. And this is looking good. We can also add a bit more. We can style the button, perhaps we might wanna make it rounded corners. So let's go ahead and apply a radius of, let's just say six pixels. So you can style your button however you want, but once that's done, what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and select button wrapper and we want to add another div block inside of this. So again, we have the CTA button link block, then we have button wrapper div, then we have the button top with the text block inside, and then we have another div block, making sure that it's underneath button wrapper and not button top. So once that's done, we want to give this a class of, let's just say, button outline. And what we want to do here is we want to actually change this position from static to absolute. And what this does is it essentially just removes it from the document, but it puts it back in to whatever parent is relative. So we set the button wrapper from static to relative. So now what we can do with the button outline, we can go ahead and change it to absolute. And then we wanna click this button here to be full. So right now it's just sitting in the button wrapper. It's almost not following conventions. So this button top is sitting inside button wrapper. But this button outline is essentially pulled out and it's in its unique world or element. Next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and in this button outline just apply a border. So let's apply a 2.5 pixel border and we'll go ahead and just change the color to let's just say the exact same blue. And once that's done we want to go ahead and just apply the exact same radius as the button. So it was 6 pixel in my case. And then right here where it says absolute, we can go ahead and just offset the margins. So right here, for example, I might put negative eight pixels. And at the bottom, I'll put negative eight pixels as well. And at the top, I'll put eight pixels to counterbalance it. And to the left-hand side, I'll put eight pixels to counterbalance it as well. So right now I've just added eight to the top, eight to the left, negative eight to the bottom, and negative eight to the right. And of course you can change these numbers. Uh, it's looking a bit too thick, so I'll go ahead and change the borders to two pixels. As you can see, we're pretty much done. From here, potentially, you might want to add a background color. Let's just say like a light gray. And you'll notice that the button is actually sitting behind the outline. So we want to swap this around. In order to do this, we have to activate Z index. So with the button top selected, we want to go ahead and change it from static to relative. And where it says Z index, we just want to give it a Z index of one. And one is greater than zero. So if we go back to the button outline, you can see that the Z index is set to auto, which is essentially zero in this case. And because this is set to one, it's appearing in front. 
So that's all done. So once you have that completed, we can go ahead and set the interaction. Let's go ahead and click the lightning bolt icon, hit, <coughs> we can go ahead and select CTA button, the link block, hit plus, hit mouse hover, hit start animation, and cre create a new animation called 3D button in. And what we can do here, is we can go ahead and select the button top, hit plus, hit move. And then from here, we can just add the move in. So because we added an offset of eight pixels, we can go ahead and add eight pixels to the right. And we'll go ahead, add eight pixels to the bottom. And you can see if I play this animation, it's just sliding in. And of course we can change the easing to maybe like a ease out. And we can also change the duration. If we want it to be a bit faster, we can change it to 0 0.35 seconds. So feel free to play around with all this good stuff and hit save. Once that's done, we want to add a hover out as well. So we can go ahead and click start an animation. We can just duplicate the button that we just created and we can double click onto the new duplicated interaction and just hit rename it to button out instead of in, go back to move and just move it back to zero pixels and zero pixels, hit save. And what we can also do is we can go ahead and apply this interaction to every single class. So instead of manually adding them in, you can just add it to the class. And whenever you have a CTA button, so if I just duplicate this a couple of times and I'll preview it, you can see that no matter which one I click, it has that animation already done. So let me just delete this real quick. So as you can see, the button is completely working. All you have to do now is just go back to the CTA button and make sure you assign it to a certain page or URL. And if you guys want to change the color of this button, I'm sure you guys can figure it out through the interactions. But that's it. It's all done. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.